Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ number 31, the knife series where I answer all your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, we're going to talk about some things, talk maybe a little bit about uh, some of my EDC choices, as well as answering more questions in this episode than we've ever answered before. Let's do it. Thank you for everyone who has submitted your questions to this series. As always, if you want a chance to get one of your own questions featured in a future episode, just go ahead and leave those down in the comments section and we'll pull from there, find some fun stuff to talk about. Uh, first one today is from Walkabout. Uh, hey David, how do I store an automatic folder for long term? Is it best to store it open so the spring is not under tension? Best wishes from Paul. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I think I've talked about this a bit before, um, but the question has been coming up a lot recently, so I figured I would address it again. Uh, and this is the case with, uh, you know, you specifically mentioned folding automatics when the blade is closed, and this applies to a, uh, not always to a, an assisted opening knife, but the question gets asked about assisted openers as well. But here in the closed position, that auto, uh, the blade is going to be under spring tension. That is perfectly fine. You're, you're don't, not going to have to worry about the spring wearing out just from being closed like that. Uh, the thing that actually puts a lot of wear on the spring is the action, actioning it, for lack of a better term. Uh, the more you open and close the knife, the sooner the, the spring is going to wear out. It's just the nature of the beast. So don't worry about storing the, the blades closed. You're not going to hurt anything. Uh, and it's a heck of a lot safer than storing your, your folding knives open in a drawer or somewhere. Cause then you gotta figure out some kind of system to keep the edge safe from your fingers or from other things around it. You know, that, that's the thing. You might not cut yourself, but you might damage the edge on something next to it. Close your knife, folks. Close your knives, folks. That's the way to do it. Anyway, yeah, there we go. Hope that helps. Um, next question is from Michael Wilson. He says, hey, David, I'm looking for a knife and I'm having trouble deciding on a new one. Budget is under $200 and the problem I have is my hands. I wear a 2XL Mechanics gloves and I'm having a tough time getting a hard use folder that's actually comfortable to use. EDC right now rotates between a Benchmade 940, a Bug Out, a Wee Banter, and a CEO Flipper from CRKT. Changes out depending on where I'm going. Sure. Um, what you're going to want to do, I think, um, and I wear, uh, the reason I always say I have slightly larger than average hands is depending on the, the company or the glove, I'm either a large or an extra large. So it, it's, I'm kind of like right on the cusp there, but for you, um, definitely bigger hands. The thing to do, uh, based on what you're carrying right now, you're going to want to size up, I think, and look for something with a neutral handle shape so that you're, uh, you're going to have a better shot of fitting. And not necessarily the automatic version because this is outside your price range, but the uh, Benchmade Presidio 2 comes to mind. Uh, I just showed it for the, uh, the auto question here. Now, what's nice about these is obviously, you know, you're talking about a hard use knife. Uh, so for me, that means a little bit more in the blade department than the, uh, than the knives that you showed or the, the knives that you talked about. But also in conjunction with that, a hard use knife to me has got to have a, a good handle it. You know, the CEO flipper or CEO, great little knife, but a very small handle. It's, it's not purpose built for, in my mind, heavier tasks. And these Presidio knives have, the full size ones, have a bit over four and a half or about four and a half inches from uh, the front of the finger guard here to the back. So there's plenty to grab onto, like I said, even for larger hands, but crucially as well, unlike something like, let's say Benchmade's new Adamus that has a prominent beak right here, the handle kind of curves back. It's, it's neutral. You don't have a restricting point there. So even if you know, you change your grip or if your hands truly are large enough to fill this out, your pinky is just going to ride up towards the back and maybe hang off the, the back end a little bit. That's okay. That's going to work quite well. You're still going to be able to have a solid hold on it and not feel like you're getting pinched up at all. These things are, are great for that. And the, the CF Elite handled versions, rather than aluminum, they come with a carbon fiber reinforced nylon and an S30V blade, about three and three quarters of an inch, come in about 140 bucks, so pretty decently attainable. It's not a cheap knife, but it's not gonna, gonna bust the bank too badly either. 
Uh, Benchmade's uh, full-size Griptilian is a little bit smaller than this, but that's still, I think, gonna be a really good option. Again, because it's got a neutral handle, it's got that nice elliptical shape. Definitely check these guys out, and uh, hopefully uh, that'll get you in the ballpark and give you something that you really feel confident in using. All right, next question comes from Mike Loeffler. He says, hey, David, love the channel. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm looking for a folding fillet knife. Do you have any good ideas? Keep up the great work. Sure thing. Um, the, the first thing I almost always think of immediately when I think folding fillet knife, um, yeah, there, there's a few companies that make them, but the one I really dig is this knife from Buck. It's the Buck Silver Creek folding fillet knife. Nice and affordable. It's about 29 bucks. Blade on them, six and a half inches long. It's a 420J2. Um, not a, not a uh, edge retention champ for sure, but the way they're heat treating these anyway, th there's definitely some flex going on in, in here. I'll demonstrate on the table here. It's not like a super crazy flexible fillet knife, but it's not a rigid fillet knife either. It's, I think, just a good all around type of flex to it. Nice and thin, full flat grind, narrow profile, the upswept tip. It's gonna be a really nice slicer. Handles on here, you've got a blue rubberized coating on it, and you've got some uh, some cutout ridges essentially here on the bottom. So not only do you have a lot of grip just from the texture of the rubber itself, but you also get those, uh, those hole cutouts give you some more surface area and some more traction points to really grab a hold onto. I mean, you're not gonna be sitting here doing uh, like bushcraft stuff with it. In that case, that might give you a little bit of hot spots, but you're not doing that with this style of knife anyway. Definitely a, a, a added or a good feature there. Lock back here on the middle, even a lanyard point there on the back. So you can see right there how it folds up quite nicely. I think that's gonna do a really good job, I think for most folks. Uh, it's about six ounces. Uh, it's not an American made buck, but it still does have their forever warranty. So you can pretty much know you're gonna be able to count on this. All right, next question comes from Con Fuse. Uh, he says, I love to barbecue on my smoker. Uh, you might have answered this question before, and sorry if I've missed it, but I'd like to know your opinion on the best folding barbecue knife uh, used for cutting membrane off, chopping through bone, etc. Please and thank you. Um, okay, cool. Uh, I do have an option here for you, um, but it's going to be kind of a split decision. I think uh, the chopping through bone aspect, uh, whether you're going through, I don't think you're chopping like straight through a bone, but you know, going through joints and separating primals and that sort of thing. Um, can't really think of a, of a good folder that would work for that that would also be kind of ideal for barbecuing. Maybe the Espada XL actually. Probably, yeah. Maybe that. Um, but <laughs> I, I think you want to, uh, you, you want to kind of take two tacks for these. Uh, for that, the, the, the splitting task specifically, I, I would actually recommend going with uh, just a traditional meat cleaver. Uh, the old hickory is certainly a good option and very classic or you know, sky's the limit there. Um, but for the folding barbecue knife for the rest of the stuff, I'm doubling up knives on uh, answers this week. That fillet knife from Buck is actually, I think, gonna be another good option for that. Um, you know, in my kitchen anyway, I'll use a, uh, a knife that'll do both fillet duty and boning knife duty. And this certainly is able to do that. It's got the right profile for it. And you've got enough length here where you could go in, you could cut through membrane, remove silver skin, that sort of thing pull slices through the meat very easily, you know, cut through uh, the middle of ribs, like if you're separating rib sections, it's gonna work really well. You've got that rubbery coating. So if, you're, uh, if things are getting slick with meat juices and stuff, you're still gonna have a solid hold on that for sure. Um, definitely check that out. Uh, in addition to that, if you want something that's a little more over the top, did mention the Espada XL, but Somebody please buy the open L number 13 and, and put it to use while you're barbecuing. You know, it may not be the best for, uh, you know, getting under silver skin and that sort of thing, but how much fun is it gonna be, whether you're smoking at home or even in a competition somewhere, if, you, if that happens to be uh, something you do, pulling this out to pull slices off of something, definitely gonna make an impression and it's definitely gonna, gonna put a smile on your face as well. Um, at least it would on mine. So these are cool. They're, they're not cheap, um, but again, they're not going to break the bank too, too much. About 99 bucks for these guys. All right. Next question comes from Artem Kalugin. Kalugin. Uh, hi, David. Thanks for your work and for the FAQ series. My pleasure. I'm glad you folks are enjoying these. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing them. Um, I'm planning to study in Germany and looking for a knife that would be legal to carry there. 
uh, two hand opening blade length under 12 centimeters. I'd also appreciate a locking blade and a high edge retaining powder steel, something like M390 or 20CV. What would you recommend? Sure. Um, I've actually had a lot of questions um, about this specifically uh, of late as well, specifically regarding Germany. Uh, and that's because they have a rather uh, kind of a particular law on the books there. And, you know, caveat, I'm not a lawyer. Don't take this as, as legal defense or anything like that. Um, but it seems pretty straightforwardly, wor straightforwardly worded. Essentially, you can have a knife uh, as long as it meets that length requirement. You can have a knife that has a lock and you can have a knife that is two hand opening, but you can't have a knife that's both. Um, so that sometimes there, there is a lot of confusion that comes up over this. Some folks think two hand opening is completely off, off, the, off the books, um, but it's, it's not quite so simple. So what I usually like to recommend are some non lockers uh, that are safe that you can open with one hand, like the Spyderco UK pen knife. Um, our small artisan cutlery Archeos uh, with the detent joint is really nice. And that even comes with a, uh, a solid pin that you could lock things open with um, or just take that off the knife and you don't have to worry about it. But Artem, uh, sir, ma'am, not sure what that is. Um, not that it matters. What I'd like to recommend to you though is um, something a little different because especially you're studying in Germany, once your studies are over, this particular knife and knives like it uh, might, you might really appreciate these. Uh, and this is the MKM, uh, shoot, what is the name? <laughs> the clap, uh, designed by Bob Terzola. And this is actually made, MKM is kind of a, a consortium of makers. This one's made by Lion Steel, and it features a, uh, a, a, it features a feature that they pioneered and you see on a lot of Lion Steel's models like the Rock, uh, the Mito, um, a few others. And that is a removable flipper tab on these guys. Really cool. So while you're over there studying, you can take that flipper tab off and this knife is a pure two hand opener. It's, it's very, very difficult to get this to pinch open with one hand. Uh, you might be able to do it if you wanted to, but it's certainly not a two handed opener. It's not designed like that and it's not um, set up to work well like that. There you go. And then when you, uh, when you come home, when you're no longer studying, you can screw that flipper tab back in and it becomes another flipper. Very nicely done, ball bearings in the pivot, and it's got the stuff you're looking for. Um, the prices on these start about uh, just under 200 for uh, standard handled versions without the uh, titanium bolster, but I think it looks really good with the titanium bolster personally. Prices on those start uh, at about 234. And tons of different handle options. You've got uh, just plain black G10 here. There's micartas, there's olive wood, and a few other wood choices, carbon fibers, a lot of, uh, a lot of options there. Even going up to a, a Dama steel blade, I believe. Uh, yeah, and that guy, uh, that guy comes in about 500. So significantly more expensive. But you, you know, just for raw performance, you're still getting a lot for this price because you do have M390 steel blade length just under three inches. So well within the, uh, the length requirement you asked for. It's just a solid, cool looking knife. It's a little on the, uh, I don't wanna say plain, but it's a little on the more restrained side, styling wise, but there's still enough going on there detail wise with the compound grind, with the fine milling and everything that it's not gonna be boring. But at the same time, it might not be as flashy and you know drawing attention you might not want. Got a liner lock, deep, or sorry, uh, milled titanium pocket clip there on the side, crown spine here, nice and comfortable. It's just got a lot going for it. Uh, if you uh, want something a little bit different styling wise, check out some of those Lion Steels as well. Like I said, the Rock, uh, the Mito, uh, the Lion Steel Tray, the TRE, um, and another MKM, I think the Colvera has it as well. So there's a few you can check out, uh, whichever uh, one kind of floats your boat stylings wise, check those guys out. All right, next one comes from Lion Knives. Uh, David, please show us your EDC every week. Have a good one and greetings from Austria. Um, greetings to you as well, also. Um, I've kind of answered this a little bit in the comments section before, but I'll bring it to the front here. Um, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, reason being is it's going to become either repetitive really quickly or it's just going to become performative where I'm planning out what I'm going to carry today just so I can show it on video and I don't know, that, that feels kind of fake to me. And, and one of the things I've always strove, strived for, strove, str strived for in these videos 
is just to be very upfront, be very genuine and honest about things. And if, if I were to kind of, you know, show the EDC every week in these videos, I don't know, it, it feels, it feels not fun. It feels kind of fake to me. Um, I do talk about some of the things I, I carry and some of the things I own uh, in, in context where it makes sense. And I think I, I like to provide feedback where I have actually carried things uh, and I'm able to offer some real world feedback on things. That's where it makes sense. But to just go, hey guys, look what I got today. I appreciate that, that you're interested and you want to see, but it's, I don't think I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to head in that direction. But thank you for your question um, and greetings and good day to you as well. Thank you very much. All right, next question comes from Tom Horn. Uh, David, could you recommend a good, small, unobtrusive tactical flashlight for pocket carry? I enjoy all your videos. Thank you, sir. Um, so I'm not a light junkie myself and I'm certainly not a tactical instructor either. Um, so this is a case where I can show you something that I have carried. And uh, this is kind of what I reach to for that type of use. And I'll show you mine, which is a little beat up. It's the Stream Tech, or Stream Tech. I always forget the uh, the number series on this, so I have to read it myself. The ProTac 1L1AA from Streamlight. Really nice little light. Uh, it's not the brightest in the world. It's about 350 lumens, uh, but that's plenty for the types of scenarios where I envision I might need this in sort of a, uh, you know, emergency or self, you know, emergency self-defense type of scenario, about 55 bucks as well. They do come with a pocket clip. Um, I don't know where mine is on that, um, but here's one in the package. You can see it's got another, uh, another color option here too. You've got the, uh, the pocket clip there so you can carry it that way. Dual fuel on these guys. It'll take either a double a or a CR 123. So you've got options there, uh, which is pretty cool. Very, very nice to have that. Um, but it's just the right size for me. Again, for my hand size, I can get a full palm full grip on it and just the, uh, the crenellations there are sticking out the end. So it's not, uh, it's not too much, but it's not so small. Like my other main EDC choice, which is a small O light, doesn't really work in sort of a quote unquote tactical scenario. So it's just the right size. You've got the dual fuel options. It's got momentary on on the uh, tail cap switch. And it's a little bit wobbly, but it will tail stand as well. So you can use that as, uh, as sort of a uh, impromptu candle in certain types of situations. So I really dig those guys. Check those out. All right, next we're gonna come to a uh, kind of a new feature uh, we're calling it here. Um, thank you to everyone who, who asks questions in the comments. Um, there's no way I've ever been able to get to all of them in these videos. Um, I work off of a, a document here on my, uh, my laptop as we're filming. I've got almost 80 pages of questions from you guys. Um, so in an effort to, uh, to try and get through more of them, um, we're, gonna, we're, we're starting a new lightning round segment. Uh, it's knife AQ pretty darn quick, so knife AQ PDQ or something like that. Um, it's the lightning round. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll kind of fire through a bunch of questions, um, not spend uh, as much time on them. And uh, we'll see how this goes. I think it's a good good idea, but we'll see. Um, all right. The DH Conrad asks, if money wasn't an option, what is the next knife that you would take home? Uh, g and Hawk Deadlock. Absolutely. I love those things. I can't afford one, but they're rock solid and really cool. Um, next question, Icolator 27. Most iconic American knife, in my opinion, equals the Microtech SOCOM. Disagree. Cool knife, but most iconic has to go to either the K bar. Well, we'll just leave it at that or the buck 110 folding hunter. Definitely one of these guys, maybe the buck, maybe the K bar sound off below. Most, most iconic American knife and go. All right. Next one, Chris Gonzalez. Uh, what knife do you recommend for my wife? I'm slowly teaching her how useful they can be, but she's still scared at times. Also, can the viewers see the face of the guy behind the camera? And lastly, what knife are you carrying right now? Uh, in order, get her to Spyderco Delica in whatever her favorite color is. No, and we already talked about this, man. Um, Delica's are a great entry level knife or a great entry into the knife world for a lot of folks. And I know not all women uh, like a pink knife, but the new pink Delica's with the black S30V blade look pretty awesome in my opinion. Uh, and you know, I'm not the kind of guy who would carry a pink knife either. That's not my style, but even I could admit that looks really good. 
But as for Thomas out there, if you have been paying attention, you, you have seen his face a few times. He's popped up here and there. Say hi, Thomas. What up? There we go. Next question, Dean, oh, sorry, no. Next question is from Micah Sexton. Uh, do you have any suggestions for a $50 to $80 bushcraft boot knife? Uh, nothing comes to mind with the uh, kind of those intersection of genres there. Um, but you have asked this question a few times, so I have kind of planted the seed of this idea into my friend Joe Flowers' mind, especially with that kind of price point in mind. Maybe we'll see a, a Condor Bushcraft boot knife in the future. Time will tell. All right, Fearsome Warrior asks, why does the Knife Center logo make me instantly think Walmart? Too close. Well, you have to tell them about that because we had our logo first. Dean Jamali asks, what's the best EDC bang for your buck crossbar lock with a hole and or flipper? SOG Terminus XR for sure. 55 bucks, D2 steel, flipper, thumb studs, and crossbar lock. No hole, but you do get the flipper. Put together very well, priced nicely. Definitely a lot of bang for your buck right there. All right, next question comes from Jatoshi Sagara. What is your best knife for zombie apocalypse? Like all respects, bushcraft, combat, cooking, in all respect, best zombie apocalypse knife as per the knife guru. Um, all right, I shouldn't be taking this question seriously, but I'm kind of into it. <laughs> so unfortunately you guys can't uh, get them new anymore. Becker BK5 has a lot going for it. It's a great camp knife. It can do light machete stuff pretty nicely. It's slicey, it's pokey. You can do a lot of long cuts with it. It even does some uh, rocking cuts on a cutting board. So you've got some good uh, kitchen uses, butchering, all that sort of thing. Probably wouldn't want to leave the, uh, the glow in the dark handles on it if it's a, a zombie apocalypse type of situation, but definitely BK5. It's not too heavy either. So it won't be uh, as much of a chore to schlep around. That's the lightning round for today, folks. Um, and so we're gonna end with one last question from CDOW720. Uh, I purchased a Spyderco PM2 for the sole purpose of spearing a Luxardo cherry out of the bottom of a rocks glass when I'm finished with a delicious Manhattan. Obviously there are real concerns about the durability of the knife in general holding up to this task over time. So I'd love to hear any suggestions you may have for an upgrade. Absolutely, you don't wanna be using that Spyderco. Obviously you need the Microtech Tac P spike. 77 bucks, so it's a little less expensive uh, than your Spyderco, and that's gonna get your cherry out no problem, but it's also a great bar multi-tool overall. Of course, it's gonna work as an ice pick with the, uh, the point there. This'll work as a, uh, a pitter, either for olives or cherries, or using cherries after all. Or God forbid you have to stuff your own blue cheese olives. Thomas used to work in a bar. He knows what I'm talking about. And I ran this by him and he ignored me, but that's okay. A um, lot there's more, there's more. You might be able to sharpen up the sides here, use it as a peeler if you need to uh, pull a twist. Glass breaker there at the bottom. So maybe be careful in the glass, but you might be able to muddle with it. All it needs to be an official multi-tool is a bottle opener, I guess. And anything can be a bottle opener. Yeah, anything can be a bottle opener, because there we go. There you go, Microtech Tac P. That's what you want, I think. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the Knife AQ. As always, if you want your own questions answered uh, or a chance to get them answered, make sure to leave them in the comments below. And if you wanna get your hands on any of these guys, except for, you know, that discontinued Becker, we'll leave links in the description as always to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program as well, because if you're gonna spend your money on one of these knives or nice bar multi-tools, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time. Hated stuff in blue cheese. <laughs> <laughs>